Okay. So good morning to all. Good morning to all. Today's class is on genetic selection. So this genetic selection, okay, so can be defined in the context of the experimental methods we employ to select the genetically pure cell and the other definition is in the con context of the molecular ecology okay so both we will see so the topic gen given is the generalized selection the lecture topic okay so first we will go into the genetic selection definition in the context of the genetic experimental tools okay so the genetic selection OK, results in the isolation of genetically pure population of cells by expressing a selectable marker driven by the promoter. OK. So the genetic selection methods allow very large libraries, say approximately uh, 10 power 9 clones per round to be explored, which do not require any special instrumentation. So if you see uh, this genetic selection offers the isolation of genetically pure population of cells. So we should know the definition of the selectable markers. OK, the selectable markers needs to be expressed the selectable marker genes needs to be expressed in order to isolate the genetically uh, pure cells. OK. For an instance, so if you uh, want to isolate the antibiotic resistant cells in a population of cells which you are performing the experiment, right? So in that case, the positive selectable marker is that is that particular antibiotic resistant gene. So this antibiotic resistant gene encodes for the enzyme, a particular enzyme that mediates the resistance to the particular antibiotic, right? So we have many uh, selectable markers, canamycin, amicillins, um, everything. So these come under positive selectable marker, OK? So this positive selectable marker confers the selective advantage for the host selection. So if your objective is to select the antibiotic resistance uh, phenotype, right? So then incorporate the addition of antibiotic. OK, so only the antibiotic resistant cells can. Occur. In the selection plate upon selection, OK, so which is called as on selection, the positive selection is called as on selection. OK, so that is why these are specifically designed to detect the, these genetically genetic selection is specifically designed to detect the enzyme features linked to the survival of the host. There are negative selectable markers also, and there are selectable marker genes which can function as both positive and negative selectable markers. We will see one by one. OK, so now we are seeing the genetic selection in the context of genetic experiment tools. So this genetic selection results in the isolation of genetically pure population of cells by expressing a selectable marker driven by the promoter. Got it? So we will see what is positive selectable marker, what is negative selectable marker, and we will see some examples of marker surviving as both positive and negative selectable marker. OK. So this genetic selection is an old yet very powerful tool for genetic research, especially in bacteria. So the numerous selectable markers are available. Are available for both positive on and negative of selections in E. coli as well as in other organisms. OK. So what is a positive selectable marker as we have already discussed? Positive selectable marker 
confers selective advantage to the whole host organism so the best example for for an antibiotic for a positive selectable marker is antibiotic resistant genes okay antibiotic resistant genes so which allows the host organism to survive under antibiotic right so uh, what is a negative selectable marker is so the negative selectable marker eliminates or inhibit growth inhibit the growth of the host organism upon selection so in the selection plate right uh, if, if that uh, particular chemical compound for example if you see a gan cyclovir a drug is being added into the selection plate so which kills the host host cells uh carrying this thymidine kinase gene from the herpes simplex virus so this thymidine kinase gene is a, of a uh, herpes simplex virus okay is a good example for a negative selectable marker okay so when like gancyclovir is added into the selection plate if that host cell carries that uh, herpes simplex virus thymidine kinase then what happens this thymidine kinase converts this gancyclovir into a toxic compound so which kills the host which kills the host cells so which makes the host sensitive right to that toxic compound okay so this is the example for a good example for a what negative selectable marker okay so remember the negative selectable marker eliminates or inhibit the growth of the host organism upon selection okay example is the herpes simplex virus thymidine kinase enzyme gene okay so some of the selectable markers can serve both as a positive and negative marker okay so how at one condition it is advantageous to the host survival whereas in the other uh, cellular condition it inhibits its growth okay so it's based upon the objective and the experimental condition we want to select the cells okay so an example would be an enzyme that can complement the oxytrophy okay what is called as oxytroph oxytrophic mutants lack is lack the essential nutrient biosynthesis enzyme okay so if you see uh, an example for a selectable marker that can survive as a both positive and negative selectable marker is that that enzyme would be an enzyme that can complement an oxytrophy and they can all the, the they must the those enzyme must also have the ability to convert a chemical into a toxic compound so which in turn leads to the negative selection right so by complementing the oxytrophy it can confer the positive selection by converting the chemical into a toxic compound it confers the negative selection fine so a typical example uh, one selectable marker gene that can function as both positive and negative marker is that ura3 please note it down ura3 this in this ura3 encodes for oratid in 5 prime phosphate decarboxylase so in the dnawa biosynthesis of nucleic acids okay we have nucleic acids right dna rna and that its components nucleotides and all so those has to be biosynthesized in the cell so in the cell we have Uh, de novo biosynthesis pathway for of nucleotide synthesis as well as salvage pathway of nucleotide biosynthesis okay so the uh, de novo pathway of nucleotide biosynthesis takes that um, uh, substrate as the amino acids and glucose as the initial substrate so from that the nucleotides would be synthesized through many enzymatic pathways so this ura3 this oratid in 5 prime phosphate decarboxylase is the enzyme essential for the de novo biosynthesis of uracil uracil u uracil so this enzyme is required for uracil biosynthesis so whereas that uh, thymidine kinase no we have seen in that uh, 
before slide right in the previous slide so that enzyme uh, involves in the salvage pathway so like salvage pathway in the sense like uh, the uh, the products of the rna dna degradation that will be recycled and once again the functional nucleotides would be synthesized through salvage pathway whereas de novo de novo from the start from the pic precursors from the amino acids and glucose initial precursors uh, the nucleotides would be synthesized okay so the cells would have uh, both to de novo biosynthesis pathway of nucleotide synthesis as well as salvage pathway of nucleotide synthesis so in this context you remember this ura3 that encodes for oratidin 5 prime phosphate decarboxylase is the enzyme required for the de novo biosynthesis of uracil okay so this ura3 can function as both positive and negative selectable marker right so this enzyme can complement an oxytrophy which confers the positive selection and this enzyme can confer the negative selection by by converting a chemical into a toxic compound so if you see this ura3 can complement the ura3 oxytopic mutants so this enzyme ura3 also converts noted down 5 fluoroauretic acid 5 fluoroauretic acid it converts this 5 fluoroauretic acid chemical into a toxic product okay so for this toxic product conversion this ura3 is needed so which will form the fluorouracil fluorouracil this is toxic this fluorouracil is toxic okay toxic to the cell so any cells carrying this ura3 gene will be killed in the presence of this 5 fluoro uracil so which imparts what negative selection okay so that is why this ura3 functions as both positive and negative selectable marker based upon the experimental condition and the uh, adjective of the interest of isolating the which type of genetically purified cells we want okay so the next one please note it down a genetic selection of lac plus and lac minus cells okay so if you see in the first one the objective is to select the lac plus cells in the group of say group of lac minus cells or a group of cells which has reverter revertens lac minus revertens sometimes uh, the group of cells have lac minus revertens as well which revert that lac minus into lac plus due to mutations and all so the purpose is the objective is to isolate the lac plus cells from the group of cells which has both lac minus lac plus or any other genotype so in that case what is the selection media you should employ you should go for yes minimal medium salts with lactose so the cells which are lac plus can only produce the enzymes essential for the lactose catabolism lactose degradation the other cells cannot survive the lac minus cells and the, uh, the these lac minus cells cannot survive in the minimal salts containing the lactose okay fine so how to select the lac minus cells this is the second aspect how to select the lac minus cells from the group of lac plus cells right so in that case go for a minimal medium with glycerol okay go for the minimal medium with glycerol these selection uh, media and selection aspects you no know, genetic selection aspects improve your understanding with the uh, basic bacterial molecular genetics concepts okay so in order to isolate the lac minus cells go for the minimal salt media with glycerol in that you should add what one compound ortho drine ortho nitrophenyl beta d thio galactoside it's a chemical compound it's a galactoside compound okay so what happens if the cells if the cells produces enzyme beta galactosidase 
then it yields a toxic compounds and the cells die because due to the cleavage of the substrate ortho dinitro or sorry ortho nitrophenyl beta d thiogalactoside okay so that is why the lac plus cells expressing this beta galactosidase in the medium containing glycerol and ortho that dinitrophenyl galactoside compound are killed and in this case only lac minus cells can survive the cells which do not produce the beta galactosidase can survive in that case okay so that is why we can go for the genetic selection of the lac minus cell so remember the genetic selection of lac plus cells that is simple just go with a minimal salt media containing lactose so for the selection of lac minus cells for selecting the for genetically selecting the cells that do not produce what in the enzyme beta galactosidase so then you have to go with the addition of this ortho dinitrophenyl beta d galactose along in the minimal uh, uh, media containing glycerol are you clear okay so this is with the genetic selection of lac plus and lac minus cells fine and the other one uh, genetic selection is quite complex but uh, like uh, these type of genetic selection mechanisms has to be remembered by you because it uh, helps you to review many basic molecular biology concepts so that is why i have taken this also okay though it is complex please scope up i'll introduce certain terminologies before going into this okay so note it down rif rif gene encodes for beta chain of rna polymerase rif encodes for beta chain please note down the uh, main uh, meaning and context i am telling now then we will go to the topic that is the genetic selection of nonsense mutation in rif okay so before going into that you should know what is rif what is rifamycin mechanism of action and everything what is suppressor tRNA and everything so the rif encodes for beta chain of rna polymerase right rifamycin right rifamycin rifamycin is the rna polymerase inhibitor rifamycin is a antibiotic right it's a chemical The rifamycin is the antibiotic, which is the inhibitor of RNA polymerase. Which is the inhibitor of RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase or essential enzymes, right, for the cell, for the transcription process to occur. So that is why there is a lot of trick in selecting the. genetically purified cells bearing the nonsense mutation in the rif allele the rif gene this rif encodes for dash yes rif encodes for the beta chain of rna polymerase okay so have you written that and uh, what is the mechanism of action of rifamycin yes so it's the rna polymerase inhibits an antibiotic which is an rna polymerase inhibitor so you should know the other terminology what is suppressor tRNA please note it down what is suppressor tRNA so suppressor tRNA results from the tRNA gene mutation okay so that mutation would lead to the introduction of the stop codon okay so that is why a suppressor tRNA is a tRNA with a mutation in the anti codon that allows it to recognize a stop codon okay <clears throat> and insert an amino acid in its place okay so these tRNA suppressors so these tRNA suppressors
can arise by mutation in the tRNA gene. Okay, so here I am showing in the yellow highlight, right? So here a typical, here you can see a typical E. coli tRNA that encodes for a ty tyrosine that not encode that is that signifies is right that uh, that is responsible for that tyrosine charged amino acid production, right? So you can see here. The E. coli tyrosine tRNA that specifies the tyrosine amino acids. So in that you can see here at the bottom, at the bottom you can see Yes, you can see here the tyrosine here, the anticodon, right? Can you see the anticodon loop, anticodon region I'm highlighting here? So this is the normal tRNA that confers that uh, tyrosine anticodon, right? So if you see in this case due to mutation, due to mutation, you can see the suppressor tRNA, right? So here the suppressor is the amber type of suppressor. Amber is UAG, right? The stop codon UAG. There are three stop code termination stop codons UAG, UAA, UGA, right? So this is what is that? UAG, right? The codon recognized here is UAG. Can you able to see? The amber codon is being recognized because due, there is a mutation at this place. Can you see the mutation in the anticodon loop? Here is the mutation in the anticodon. Got it? So that is why this suppressor tRNA is a tRNA mutation uh, with a mutation in the anticodon region that allows it to recognize a stop codon and insert an amino acid in its place. Okay. So we will see this. So there are many kind of uh, suppressor tRNAs which rise, which arise due to tRNA uh, mutations. OK, so one such is the amber uh, mutation that we saw one example Okay, here over. So here you can see the mutation in the anticodon loop in the suppressor tRNA, right? That due to that mutation, it recognizes the stop codon, right? So you can see here. So these are the three main context. Fine. So for coming to this topic, what is the topic? Genetic selection of nonsense mutation in the RIF gene. So this RIF gene nonsense mutation, right? How to select this? So because this mutation is highly harmful to the cells. So how to select this? We will go step by step. OK, so first step in selecting the desired mutant. First, mutagenize the strain. Please note it down. Mutagenize the strain harboring arch minus. This is the genotype of the strain. Mutagenize the strain arch minus rifamycin sensitive with the suppressor mutation in the tRNA. That is the amber suppressor mutation in the tRNA and which are streptomycin resistant genotype. So mutagenize the bacterial cells of this genotype. Fine. So that is the first step. OK, the, this RIF allele encodes for the beta chain of the RNA polymerase. OK, so this RIF S, no, this RIF S encodes for the RNA polymerase, but this RIF RNA polymerase will be rifamycin sensitive. That is the name RIF S. Please note it down. RIF superscript S, which means RNA polymerase or sensitive to the antibiotic rifamycin. Please note it down. RIF S encodes for 
sensitive RNA polymerase that is sensitive to the rifamycin antibiotic. Got it? Okay. And there is a temperature dependent regulation of this tRNA suppression. Okay. That one case you should remember. Please, at the right hand side, at the right hand side, please visualize at low temperatures, say at low temperatures of 30 degree, right? When the cells are grown at the low temperatures of 30 degree, under these conditions, the nonsense mutation in the RIF allele would be lethal since the suppressor would be active and the complete beta chain of the RNA polymerase would be synthesized. So as you can see in this example, would not be lethal, right? The cell sort would not be lethal, but the RNA polymerase or rifamycin sensitive, but the cell sort alive because this suppressor tRNA is mutated. That's TNR is supp tRNA suppressors are active, okay? So the nonsense mutation, what is nonsense mutation? Yes, so nonsense mutation is a, please note it, Nonsense mutation is the point mutation through which a stop codon is introduced, which truncates the protein or enzyme production, right? So the functional, uh, that functional RNA polymerase cannot be synthesized if that nonsense mutation is continuously, would be taken by the cells and translated transcribed and translated, right? But if there are tRNA suppressors, what will happen? If there are tRNA suppressors, this tRNA suppressors can go and bind into the, the suppressor tRNA can go and bind into that uh, nonsense codon, that mutated portion, right? That nonsense codon region. And in that place, they can insert an amino acid instead of terminating the transcription signal. So that is the function of suppressor tRNA, right? So the top suppressor tRNA is a tRNA with a mutation in the anticodon that allows it to recognize a stop codon and insert an amino acid in its place. So which means what? It would not terminate the translation process, right? So that is the role of suppressor tRNA. So that suppressor tRNA is functional at low temperature. Please remember, please note it down. That suppressor tRNA is, please note down this point. The suppressor tRNA is. So that and why, which have this uh, go and buy with that mutation, nonsense mutation in the RIF allele, right? So which would not terminate the transcription and translation process, right? So the uh, RNA polymerase production occurs, but as it is RIF S Ali, the RNA polymerase would be rifamycin sensitive. Okay, so that's what I have written. The cells are alive at low temperature due to the. Please note it down. The cells are alive at low temperature due to the functional suppressor tRNA. Got it? Whereas at high temperature, if you see at high temperature, maybe take uh, above 42, 42 degree, right? At high temperature, this suppressor tRNA is not functional, is not functional, and this cannot bind into the this nonsense mutated codon, right? So and which cannot continue the translation process that is the RNA polymerase production process. So there won't be any RNA polymerase and the cells would die. Got it? So the temperature dependent selection, the rifamycin S and rifamycin R, that is rifamycin S allele encodes for rifamycin sensitiveness. And these aspects that uh, suppressor tRNA uh, aspects, these are exploited for the genetic selection of the nonsense mutation in the RIF allele, okay? So what the final step is that in the step two, right? In the step two, what happens? Like the region of the chromosome containing the 
arch plus and drif r genes would be introduced by mating that is through conjugation with the appropriate streptomycin sensitive strain so remember uh, in case of that conjugation right so we have that donor strain and recipient strain that recipient strain would be antibiotic susceptible or resistant in order to isolate in the selection plate in order to isolate the ex conjugants right in order to isolate the ex conjugants in the selection plate this uh, recipient strains must be resistant to the antibiotic as you can see the recipient strains or streptomycin resistance so that the ex conjugants ex conjugants or the uh, recipients that have taken part in conjugation that have taken part in dna transfer right so the key is here the donor strain must be streptomycin susceptible which must have the genotype what arch plus and rifamycin resistant gene allele it must have the rifamycin resistant allele so once it has been transferred then go for the please note down the step 2 the region of the chromosome containing arginine plus and rif r genes could be introduced by mating with an appropriate streptomycin resistant recipient streptomycin susceptible strain right streptomycin susceptible strain which is a donor strain right which is having this arch plus and rif plus another uh, rif like uh, it's a uh, rif ali r that is which encodes for the rna polymerase which are rifamycin resistance please note it down rif r encodes for rif superscript small r rif r encodes for rna polymerase that are rifamycin antibiotic resistance got it uh, though it is a it's quite a complex genetic selection i want you i want you uh, the people to know the basic molecular genetic concepts right so somehow you can get the knowledge of suppressor trna and all right yes so as already the conjugation mechanism principles have been studied right so as you can see the the donor strains would be that streptomycin susceptible and recipient strains are streptomycin resistance and what would be the step step 3 go for the minimal media with with what yes with streptomycin so the step 3 would be selection in the minimal media with streptomycin rifamycin because the ex conjugants right the ex conjugants or the cells would have taken part in conjugation that have taken part in gene transfer right so the ex conjugants would have this rifamycin resistance and what which lacks the arginine okay so go for the selection at 42 degree that is at high temperature go for the selection at 42 degree okay so what happens during this high temperature the trna suppressors are not active right it's not going to insert an amino acid in the nonsense codon place right and also the rna polymerase production would be stopped right so what happens at 42 the trna suppressors are not going to be active okay so the cells with only rifamycin sensitive would die okay the cells only with rifamycin sensitive would die so this is the last slide of this aspect genetic selection okay with of this uh, nonsense mutation in the rif allele okay so you can see here 
at high temperature at 42 degree at 42 degree this there are non that uh, that trna suppressor activity is not functional so this rif s cannot produce rna polymerase right this rif cannot produce rna polymerase uh, so if you see there is only one cope that is if the cell carries this the x conjugates carries this rif r right which encodes for the rifamycin resistant polymerase only then that cell cell can survive because we are adding the rifamycin into the selection media okay whereas at low temperature what happens at low temperature that suppressor trna is active so that can uh disrupt that nonsense mutation in the codon of the rif s allele so which in turn leads to the production of rif s rna polymerase which are rifamycin sensitive and though it has the other rif r allele rifamycin resistant allele that rifamycin sensitive rna polymerase is dominant than the rifaminous resistant rna polymerase so the rifamycin the cells would be sensitive to the rifamycin remember the cells would be sensitive to the rifamycin okay the cells are sensitive to the rifamycin because that rifamycin sensitiveness rna polymerase is dominant okay so that is why at low temperature the cells are sensitive to the rifamycin so that is why we the selection is done at 42 degrees celsius okay that is why the selection is being done at 42 degrees celsius during that time the trna suppressors are not active and uh, the non functional rifs right there would be no um, uh, rif s rna polymerase right because of the act, this non activeness of the suppressor trnas okay okay so the cells with only rif s would die okay so the next the other aspect is the normal which is a quite easier one the genetic selection definition in the context of the molecular ecological aspects right so come in with your mind uh, come to the uh, genetic selection that is occurring in nature as well as the artificial selection which we are doing in the day by day by day life for our own advantage right um, so first we will see the genetic selection principle based on the context of the molecular ecology please note it down so the genetic selection principle states that the selection must occur at the molecular or genetic level not just at the fittest phenotypic or organismic level to explain the generation of polynucleotide and polycodon linear digital uh, prescription okay so which we means what we have the primary structure of the nucleic acids right so that dna that central dogma of life dna to uh, to rna then rna to protein right so even that single codon change has impart genetic variation and this over this accumulates over generation and generation if that accumulation of mutation is beneficial to the survival of the organism that that beneficial alleles would be selected over generation and generation right there and by the natural selection uh, is uh, taking place in throughout right in the evolutionary process right for selecting the beneficial alleles that are selective advantage to the organism right so if you see that uh, if you see the there is a complex network always right if you see the central dogma of molecular biology see here in the right hand image the central dogma of molecular biology is itself focused right so you have various epigenetic regulatory mechanisms as well right so you can have methylation mirna mediated regulation other small rna mediated regulations and then transcription factor variations everything right so there are complex regulatory networks involved with the 
uh, switch on and switch off as well as fine regulating the gene activity. So all aspects has to be considered on studying the uh, genetic selection at the molecular ecological level. OK, so that is why the genetic principle states that selection must occur at the molecular and or genetic level and that has to be cracked right through all the uh, process of central dogma of molecular biology, which is given over here. So you can see here the uh, histone modifications, methylations, miRNA, these are epigenetic mediators, right? And you can see which uh, there are uh, complex protein signaling networks and there which will decide uh, the whole metabolic network would be decided by these uh, primary and secondary switches and ultimately at last you have the biological networks connection as well, right? So this uh, right hand side image implies the tight gene regulation of expression in case of eukaryotes mediated through many processes, right? So that is why the metabolism depends upon the holistic integration of thousands of individual protein prescriptions based on the individual protein pres prescription. There will be a holistic interaction which decides the metabolism network of the cells, right? So every aspects would be studied, right? <clears throat> so ultimately, uh, the tight control switches through genetic instructions has to be established and studied in the genetic selection aspects at the molecular ecological level. OK, so what is the natural selection? Like it's uh, if you see in case of genetic selection, there are uh, in the context of ecology, there is a natural selection. So these natural selection can be mediated through the environmental uh, selection that is ecological favorable conditions, ecological conditions as well as sexual selections, right? And we have the like artificial selection, right? So the we are breeding dogs, the dogs beneficial, the dogs of beneficial traits are being breed, like animals of beneficial traits are being bred and uh, breed and it's being developed for our advantage, right? To have the beneficial trait, right? And also like plant breeding, the different varieties of rice or whatever the crops. So these are uh, being done in the artificial genetic selection aspects. So the gene pool differs based on our the artificial selection also, right? So the natural selection process is also going on. So now I think like nowadays this is the uh, era of uh, the influence of the artificial selection is more right in these eras, right? In the genetic pool in the world, right? So here you can see like uh, in the natural selection that Darwin, no, he studied. Darwin was studying the Galapagos Island, which is at the near that uh, South American region, right? So these islands, these islands have finches uh, that have 14 different species. So if you see those finches, those birds that finches know they have arised from a single common ancestral and uh, the natural selection has made to uh, make these birds into come under evolution and take part in evolution and create different species of uh, birds which are about 14 different species of birds if, if darwin closely analyzed the birds he saw uh, that based on the feeding habits of that finches and the availability of food sources in that uh, Galapagos Island, they have got the uh, these adaptive radiation type of evolution. OK, the adaptive radiation type of evolution, the adaptive evolution, the evolution is adaptive. So if there are the insects, finch, uh, finches that feeds on with the insects, they have different kind of uh, morphology. OK, but the thing is they have derived from the common ancestor through adaptive radiation. They have uh, uh, diverse into many different types of 